Hello, everybody. My name is Dr. Omoni Yaduye. You're welcome to this episode of Medical Tips. Today, we'll be discussing the topic pelvic inflammatory disease, PID. PID is, is a disease uh, that is common among sexually active females. It's a disease of a reproductive organ. I, I decided to talk about this because of the importance of this disease on um, infertility. Well, uh, pelvic inflammatory disease is an infection of the female reproductive organ. It most often occurs when um, sexually transmitted bacteria spread from the vagina to the uterus, the fallopian tube, or the ovaries. The signs and symptoms of PID can be subtle or mild. Some women don't even experience any sign or symptoms. As a result of this, uh, one may not realize that um, she has it until uh, there is a trouble getting pregnant or that person has a chronic pain. Um, the signs and symptoms of um, pelvic inflammatory disease uh, may be mild and uh, it it's, can be sometimes difficult to recognize. Some women don't have any sign at all, like I said, but when the sign and symptoms of PID are present, most often, uh, it includes the following. There can be pain. This pain can be mild, it can be severe. It can be mild, it can be moderate, it can be severe. And then, uh, usually, this pain is in the lower abdomen and the pelvis. Apart from these, uh, there can be ab abnormal or heavy vagina discharge. It may come with unpleasant odor. There can also be abnormal uterine bleeding, especially during or after intercourse or between menstrual cycles. Pain during intercourse could also be a sign of, um, of a PID, fever, sometimes with chills. Painful frequent or difficult ur urination can be present. If you have signs and symptoms that are suggestive of PID, the first thing you need to do is to stop having sex till you see your doctor. It's important because um, PID, um, like I said, is caused by sexually transmitted um, um, bacteria. Let's talk about the causes of PID, pelvic inflammatory disease. Pelvic inflammatory disease is usually caused by bacteria, but gonorrhea and the chlamydia are the most common out of all uh, the bacteria that are involved in causing uh, PID. These bacteria are usually acquired during unprotected sex. Actually, many bacteria are involved in causing PID. Well, a number of factors can be responsible for um, increased risk of having um, pelvic inflammatory disease and uh, it includes uh, the following. Number one, being sexually active at an age younger than 25. Number two, having multiple sexual partners. If you have multiple sexual partners, it means that different microorganisms will be introduced to you. You have uh, Mr. A and Mr. B and Mr. C, and you have sex with them. Okay? Mr. A is likely to have sex with one person outside there, he brings that to you. Mr. B brings his own. Mr. C. So you have multiple microorganisms that have been introduced to you. Number three, having a sexual relationship with a person who has uh, more than one sexual partner. It, it, it means that uh, 
that for example if you are if you as a lady you have a relationship with a man who has other women okay the the vagina is not a clean place it's a dirty place because uh, the way God created us is such that we have um, some bacteria in our body that serves as protectors okay for example we have some bacteria in our mouth uh, they, they are not injurious to our health but they stay they are there they are there they are called normal flora there are some bacteria in the vagina uh, but that's where they stay they are not injurious to our health they are normal flora but for different people you may not find exactly what is in one person in the other person. Yeah, and if you have a relationship with somebody who has multiple sexual partners, what it means is that that man can bring different kind of microorganisms to you. Okay? And uh, this can become injurious. This can result into an infection. And, uh, as a matter of fact, what happens when there is an infection is uh, especially PID, it occurs when um, sexually transmitted disease progresses. That is, initially the microorganism can stay in the vagina. And then as they multiply, as they multiply, they progress to the womb. Okay? From there, they can move to the fallopian tubes, move to the ovaries, to the pelvic floor, and then they accumulate in an amount that is dangerous um, for our health. They cause wounds on those surfaces and then can then breed pores. Alright? These wounds, even after treatment, sometimes if it is not properly treated, it can heal with fibrosis, leaving a scar. There. This has a significant impact on what will happen to the fallopian tube later. It can result in tuber blockage, can, can result in severe pelvic adhesions, and all these play major role in infertility. The purpose of this talk is to open our eyes to um, it's related matters that can cause problems for us of which you know some of these things can be prevented let's talk about the complications of PID complications of pelvic inflammatory disease of course I want you to understand that complication will not come except the situation is not handled one attitude I want all of us to cultivate is to at all times when we have complaint, see our doctor. You don't wait, don't wait, don't wait. It can be dangerous. The prevention is better than cure. Complications that are certain. Number one, ectopic pregnancy. Ectopic pregnancy is um, a big problem and it means that uh, pregnancy is established outside the uterus normally when when you are pregnant your baby should be in the womb any pregnancy that is found outside the womb can be in the fallopian tube can be close to the ovary can be in the pelvic wall can be anywhere but outside uh, the womb, it, that is ectopic, ectopic pregnancy. Um, PID that is poorly treated can predispose to ectopic pregnancy. Why? Why will it happen that way? It will happen because uh, if PID occurs, it can make the fallopian tube rigid. It will not make the tube to move freely. Ordinarily, before fertilization takes place, The egg stays at a particular point in the fallopian tube, waiting for the sperm. It stays there. 
it can be there for 48 hours. If the spam does not come, then it dies. If the spam comes and uh, there is fertilization in that place, both of them will move back to the womb. In a situation where there had been uh, PID and had been poorly treated, though it had healed with fibrosis, and then the tube is finding it difficult to move freely. The movement of this um, fertilized ovum may be poor, such that it may not even get to, to, to the womb. It can even move back. So, pregnancy will be outside the womb. And that is ectopic pregnancy. And they, you know, ectopic pregnancy cannot be born. It's a dangerous pregnancy. Usually, it causes problem for the mother. Another complication is infertility. Like I said, um, this infection can damage the reproductive organ. Okay? And, uh, for example, just imagine um, a situation where the ovaries are damaged. Then, uh, where would the hair come from? It makes the person to have problems, chronic pelvic pain. Pelvic inflammatory disease can cause pelvic pain that may last for years. It can cause scarring on the fallopian tubes and other pelvic organs. And this scarring will continually cause pain, even during intercourse and ovulation. Number four, tubal ovarian abscess. This means that there can be a collection of pores in the reproductive tract. Most commonly, these abscesses affect the fallopian tubes and the ovaries. But then, they can also develop in the uterus or in the pelvic. If the abscess is left without treatment, you could develop a life-threatening you can see now that um, pelvic inflammatory disease is an uh, important topic that every woman should uh, be aware of. Uh, this information is for everybody. It may not be you, it may be your friend that will need this information one day. So please uh, do your friends good by sharing this video. It will get to somebody that will need it one day. Thank you very much. I want to drop this with you that you should not forget that health is wealth. That prevention is better than cure. And that this information is important. I want you to stay safe. I also wish that you stay healthy. My name is Dr. Omoni Adoye. Till next time, you see me again on this channel on Medica Tips. I love you.